welcome back to Effing Priceless. This is episode 13. We are so excited. We are back to you once again from different states remotely. And we loved how last week's episode went. So that's like what we're going with. <laughs> yeah, that was not, uh, th- there was a lot of funny stories in there. Like when you sent me the, uh, the mashup of the best clips or, you know, whatever, just a few, I was cracking up. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. I hope you guys saw the trailer for that. I He wanted me to do a few clips, um, just a few minutes each. And when I put all of my favorite or funny moments together, it was like 20 minutes long. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. And, we'll release a few of them so you get to see them and then go check out the full episode. Yeah, exactly. But the one that I just sent you, the one that we just posted, um, oh my gosh, I think it was absolutely hilarious. So Yeah, it's yeah. for sure good. <laughs> Definitely. (laughs) Yes. So this week we're going to talk about one of our favorite shows and how we can relate to the show. (laughs) Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's a badass show, that's for sure. The Challenge on MTV? Yes. The Challenge, MTV, it's been on air for 22 years. Yeah. Absolutely insane. So if you guys haven't seen the challenge, I know a few of my friends have seen it, but not a lot by any means, um, because it's an older show that's just continued on. It has all reality MTV personnel on the show, and it's like a physical, mental challenge, like game. Yeah, not even just uh, MTV reality shows, because American Ninja Warrior isn't, Survivor isn't, uh, yeah. some of the other stuff. It's reality TV. The Bachelor, ba- like, they're not. Yeah, you're right. It has, like, um, It's reality Bravo. TV people. Yeah. yeah. Bravo shows, even, like, Survivor. What was Turbo? Survivor, yeah. uh, Survivor. Turkey. Mm-hmm. Like, different countries also. Like, just super badass show, though. These people are so physically fit. <laughs> yeah. The challenge is, it's a long... They put them together typically in a badass mansion, but right now it's in an underground bunker, like a war zone bunker, which is pretty cool. And there's starts off with, I don't know, 24 of them, maybe 30. Yeah, it's like 24 or 28 usually. And there's a, yeah. So every week or every episode, there's a huge challenge. There's winners, losers, and then eliminations where they vote people out. But to vote them out, you have to compete head to head in a physical puzzle endurance some sort of crazy challenge that they make up on the shows and the challenges are bad as think yeah. fear factor but cooler exactly sometimes they have to eat crazy shit the only thing they don't uh, bring in is animals which is i like that they don't bring that in but it's a uh, intense rock climbing muscle building it's like american ninja warrior but it's- like little challenges designed to go head to head and compete yeah, it's so badass. The host is TJ Lavin, so he's super fucking hilarious on this show. All of the competitors are really hilarious. Obviously, there's drama. You have, like, these 28 people who are living together under one roof. And they're all and, reality TV people, so... Yes, yeah. exactly. So people from Big Brother, Vanderpump Rules, Survivor, American Ninja Warrior, um, the real world, like... The real these- world is the main, yeah, the main pull from the casting because... Back in the day, the challenge was the old school MTV show, The Challenge and Road Rules, Mm -hmm. which were two of their best reality shows. And they would pull just from them and they would put them uh, against each other. And that's how it used to be. They'd pick a team and a team. But after that, they're like, all right, fucking everybody come in. Like, and they pick some good people. Like there's, I mean, it's a lot of drama. It's entertaining because it's the drama and the aspect, whole bunch of hot dudes, whole bunch of hot girls doing crazy stuff in awesome countries. And then for a million dollars now, the past few years, the, the prize money has been bumped up to a million. So they get real competitive. I mean, it's, yeah. it's for real. It's to win some money. Exactly. It's so crazy. Sometimes they're in teams. Sometimes they're in pairs. Sometimes it's just solo. So it gets really intense along the way. This way it's been, or this season, it's been a combination of all of them. But at the end of the day, it's going to be a solo winner. Or I think it's going to be like a female and a male winner. That's how I think. Probably. That's how they typically will do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I think it's going to go. But if anybody listening remembers like Johnny Bananas, like OG Real World, like CT, what's his last name? Tamburello. Like, yeah. Wes is on it. Wes Bergman. Oh my gosh. And then some of our favorites, which I didn't even know this. 
um, Polly Cal- Califor, Califori, and then Car yeah. Maria. So there are a couple on the show, and Car Maria wasn't on a reality TV show, actually. She showed up on Fresh Meat. That was her first oh, season. Oh, that's how she got in? She auditioned for it? That's how she yeah, got in. Um, that's yeah. fucking cool. Yeah, you know I- what? I never saw on a real, I, I watched uh, Real World. I never saw on one. Yeah, so I like looked it up one day because I am obsessed with that couple. <laughs> They're a power couple, and she's a beautiful pirate woman. <laughs> Covered she's in tattoos, like, red dreads, feathers. I mean, just, she's kind of bitchy sometimes, but she's a badass. She is such a badass. And I think another reason why we both really like her too is she is such a strong advocate, spokesperson for animal rescues like ASPCA like all of those organizations she's an avid horseback rider like she has a horse like all this stuff and um Polly was on Big Brother so Mm -hmm. you know a lot of the MTV stars because of how MTV like I don't want to use this expression stupid but is woke yeah (laughs) they they really all of them I mean, yeah, they're dramas, and sometimes you catch some ugly stuff and ugly parts of them on TV, but, I mean, you can't imagine being in a situation like that. It gets to you, the pressure. But for the most part, they're all really good people. They all do their part for charities, advocate equality, uh, no discrimination. I mean, they're, they're out there. And when something happens that speaks out, like what happened this uh, past season or yeah. this past week with the uh, D yeah she said some hateful stuff some really bad things and they they pulled her and they even edited her out of the they're gonna edit her out of the rest of the season pretty much any any scenes with her they're gonna take it out yeah exactly mtv really like has um everyone's back in that aspect they're all for equality i mean just think of the shows that they air yeah on tv it's they mtv want... it's our generations yeah i mean they know exactly what's they're all for like the younger generations kind of thing and then I feel like they were such a huge part of our, everyone's lives growing up. Like, of course. I remember I'd, yes, I remember yeah. I'd wake up in the morning and watch their music videos that they'd show every single morning. Back so, when it was actually music television. Yeah. Music television, mm-hmm. yep. So, you know, MTV, shout out to them. They, I think they've been doing a really good job keeping up with what's going on in the world and yeah. really protecting their viewers and their cast members. Yeah, they send the right yeah. message and they stand behind it too. They're not just say this and then, oh, let this person get away with it. They've asked a few people from the entire, um, the network, Camilla. Yeah. And D now, I mean, they, they fucked up. They're bad people. Not, I don't, I would never say they're bad people. They said some things. They messed that up. That Sherman said, and you know what, whether they, they believe that and that's who they are or not is another thing, but it's too late. I mean, yeah. zero tolerance to the MTV. That's if you're up. a public figure like that, like you have to know that whatever mm. you say is under a microscope. Like you're so popular on social media. Like anything that you say, people who look up to you kind of thing, you have to be careful about what you say. Oh yeah. But yeah, especially right now with what's going on in the world, everything needs to be said, especially when you're looked at like that. It needs to be inspiring. It needs to be good for the good of the people, and you need to understand that. So I mean, it's a blessing and a curse for them. Sometimes they don't watch themselves. And like I said, this challenge, if you haven't seen the show, watch it and you'll understand the stress. And like, if y'all, if you like the reality TV shows like Big Brother and shit where they put them in the house and tensions flare and they get under skins, or some people are there literally for not just a physical, um, you know, a head game, but it's a psychological warfare. They'll break people. They'll say things to them to make them act out or hit someone. Because if you fight on the show, you're automatically off. And they'll do that on purpose because, boom, as soon as you hit me, I know you're the baddest motherfucker in here. Well, you're out of competition now. You know, exactly. you can't even win the money. I don't have to fight. I don't have to go against you in the final. Yeah, they're way stricter on that these seasons. <laughs> I feel like in the past they weren't as strict. No, um, always. CT's been kicked off like three or four times. Oh, yeah, like quite, quite often. I but... mean, but every time he fucking <laughs> wrecked a dude. <laughs> he was a monster. He has changed so much now. He was super fucking scary back then he's the most if not the most impressive physical specimen of a guy that's ever been on the show damn near close yeah it's either him or like zach yeah exactly or mark the ogs or evan i mean but ct is a whole nother beast and he used to be fucking mean and have a temper but he's changed a lot he's chilled back he's the dad now of the house he has a kid now he's married they did like a whole wedding special on him and his new wife um 
but he, yeah, he used to be angry, and <laughs> he was literally God chiseled him. Like he is oh, yeah. just one beautiful specimen, and now he's like dad bod. But if you think about it, if you already had that amazing physique to begin with, and then you like gain a few pounds, you're even bigger. <laughs> yeah, he he's he's a brute. He's massive. <laughs> what did they call him? Like the train or something? Whatever he was planning on running someone over, he'd go choo choo. <laughs> you, yeah, the choo choo train. Yeah, he would yell, "You ready for the chain?" And then he would go choo choo, and he truck people. <laughs> When he trucked people in hall brawl, that's a that's a one of the most physical eliminations they have. It's a narrow hallway, and it's two dudes, and you carry in a ball, and you you're gonna meet in the middle, and whoever gets up through the other side, and they give them uh, football pads. So they're fucking getting hit. And this and hallway quite a few, is yeah. like three feet wide. Like you can't yeah. really like go around them. You have to just truck them over. Yeah, and it's like best two out of three. Whoever gets to the other side, so they hard or the Johnny Bananas backpack story, which will legendary, probably the Legend. most uh, watched or known about of the challenge, when they strap two guys back to back. Johnny Bananas, which is already a physically great guy. I mean, he's huge. He's a he's strong, amazing. good endurance, but not against CT, not against a monster. No. They strap them back to back and said, first one to make it to the other side, pretty much. They had to score basketball in a, in a drum, in like a trash can drum. And he just stood up like he was a Dora the Explorer backpack on him. And walks over and then slams him on the ground. <laughs> as hard, like, really fucking hard. It was absolutely insane. Um, so all of these people are super into, like, CrossFit. They train all year round for this competition. And it airs, they film twice a year. So there's two seasons a year. Usually one in the spring and one in the fall. Or, like, winter. So they're actually recording now. They're filming now. For this oh, season really? that's gonna air in the fall yeah so they're still recording with COVID going on because they're all isolated they started like two weeks ago like they're filming wow yeah i don't know what but it's what gonna about... be like or with all of them living in the same quarters i don't know what precautions they're taking or how that's working how is that going on if you and me are seeing uh their instagrams go off right now are they doing that from the house from the challenge house Johnny's going, Wes is going. I don't know if they're in this season. Wow. Uh, that's interesting. Okay. Because Ooh. I heard I heard that a few of like the big brother people aren't coming back. And because they got asked back on Big Brother All Stars. So they're back there. Oh I yeah. don't know. Yeah. So we'll oh, see. Interesting. So we're in the middle of a season, guys, and a few weeks ago. <laughs> oh my lord. There was an elimination between these two guys basically fighting over a girl. And one of them was a rookie. One of them is a veteran who... That won, won last year. That won last year. Um, his first season, though, he didn't do too hot. He, like, passed out, whatever, the first, the first challenge. <laughs> the fir the, yeah, the first challenge. He was too bulky. He was all muscle, and he came into the challenge thinking all strength. And the first challenge was a running endurance. Oh, run 15 miles. And he, he couldn't make the cut. Came back the very next season and fucking won. And won. Because he linked up with CT, the godfather, learned from him, and Rogan's a monster. Yeah, He's like 6'1", no. I think. Probably 220. All muscle. He's I mean, he's the dude's huge. a model. Or yeah. a stripper, actually. He's a like, stripper. He's, yes. Yeah, he's a... <laughs> yeah, so you know what his physique looks like. He's chiseled. <laughs> exactly. And he used to be a rugby player. So oh, Jesus Christ. I forgot guy, he's English. Yes. Yeah. So they also, British, like yeah. I said, they have people from overseas, like Australia, UK, um, yeah. all of these different countries. What's in the UK, Presley? I don't want to talk about that right now. <laughs> My sister didn't know. She texted me and she's like, what's the UK? And I was like, the group wait, of wait, countries? Wait, wait, let me try to guess. Okay. I'm going to try to guess. Um, Wales? Is yeah, that, I think Wales. Is, yeah, I think Wales is. Um, Scott, Scotland, Ireland. Yeah, it's one of the Irelands, which I didn't know there was two. Yeah, there's two. I I learned that. I already forgot which one. It's like West Ireland or. Uh, yeah, it's West Ireland, Wales, and uh, England. England. Okay. And and I feel like for some reason before that there was an absorption with. Scotland. Scotland or Ireland. I feel like they're in there somehow, 
but I don't think it was when they formed the UK because if you think about it, it goes England, Britain. Britain's a combination of England and somebody. And then Britain, uh, Ireland, and Wales, that's the UK. Okay, well. That's so, why there's different <laughs> flags and you're like, wait a minute, I fucking thought that was the English flag. Remember I sent it to you and you're like, no yes. way, I've never seen that. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, that's why it's such a shit show. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. yeah, because they took each country and they combined the <laughs> flags, so it's like crosses red because it's like this cross and this way X and this way. Some, yes. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Um, my boyfriend makes fun of me because I am shit at geography. Like one of the worst. I, I'm fine, honestly. I'm good with U.S. geography. I am not gonna lie. Caribbean, yeah, I got you. I'm good. I'm good. Caribbean, I got you. But anywhere else, I have no fucking idea where anything is. You asked me where something was in South America the other day, right? And I was like, for real? Did I? Was it I you? Someone I did. Think I was like, so. okay. Well, anyways, so Rogan, this monster, they put him in a challenge because he was, uh, this other guy was hooking up with his ex girlfriend, the one up from the previous season that he was with, or not girlfriend, just chick that he was hooking up with. Yeah. And, uh, so he wanted to go in the, into the elimination against him. And this guy, Jay, had already won a couple, and he was a rookie, though. So when you're a rookie on the season, they throw you in first. And if you happen to make it out, then you earn respect, and you come back on other seasons. But you're going in first. Fuck you, you know? But rookie. this poor guy. <laughs> okay, so like I said, Rogan's probably 6'1 and 220. Jay's 5'10, maybe 5'11. I wouldn't say he's too short. But 160, he's yeah, a rock. He, uh, he's a rock climber body. Like he was on Survivor. Swimmer. Yeah. He was on Survivor, like Exhibit A. You know. Yeah, not um, a physical, physical dude. I mean, rock climber, but not. Well, the challenge was tailored to brute strength and yeah. ferociousness because the challenge was called Fireball. They put him in football uh, uniform or pads, football gear, and then in the middle, there's a drum. And then there's a ring around the drum, a big ring. And the first guy picks up the ball, which is on fire. And they say, go score it in there. The guy inside the ring, just don't let him score. First two to win. So Jay has the ball and they're like, okay, go. He runs and Rogan meets him just like a football tackle. And instead of hitting him head on, he hits him. And as he's going down, he pivots and swings him around and lands on him fucking hard he threw him and his legs literally in the air like he grabbed him and threw him down and tackled him down he didn't fucking move like his soul left his body when that happened guys they ended the episode with jay <laughs> on the ground and everyone thought he was dead i literally went to go look at his instagram account it was private for whatever reason and i was like is he is he alive? Like R.I.P. J. R.I.P. It the brutal the hit is. I've watched football all the time. I've played football. I've seen a lot of street fights. That was a brutal hit because Rogan's just so much stronger. And, and remember, so hard. And remember, Rogan's was a rugby player. Yo, yeah, this guy, yes. So he knows how to tackle. He knows yeah. how to you know ma maneuver. He knows maneuver. how to pivot. Like cut. Yes, exactly. He, he oh body slammed this guy. Body slammed him. Yeah. And literally, they end the episode right there. And I was like, oh, my God. R.I.P. The show's off the <laughs> air. Like, that's it. He died. <laughs> I can't believe they fucking aired this, man. This is rough. <laughs> they just aired him die. <laughs> it was brutal. Y'all need to go to YouTube and look that up. Rogan versus J MTV The Challenge. Anything like that, it'll come right up. And it's, it's, it's such a good It'll hit. be on there. Um, but he so survived. the next the next week, the next week, it picks up right where it left off. Jay gets up, mind blowing. Yeah. Ooh. And he plays one more round. He plays another round and not oh no, he gets up and he goes, What are the rules again? And they yeah. go, I'm sorry, what? And he goes, <laughs> I, I don't know what, what's happening. And they, like, explain to him the game, and he goes, I didn't hear anything you just said. And they yeah, were like, are you good? He has a massive concussion. No, he's not good. 
He just got ran over by a truck. Like, no, Rogan, named Rogan. It, no, he's not good. He's fine. For sure, he had a concussion, and his arm looks so bad. Dislocated, broken, I don't know what he did to it, but it didn't look good. He's fine. <laughs> no, he was not fine. Not fine. So, we watched that, and it's such a brutal hit. Like, God, we love violence. Like, the violent hit, it's a part of the show. It's, it's physicality, you know? It is, but literally when that happened, I was staring at my TV, and I was like, <gasps> Holy the whole, shit. All the cast members, too, were like, <gasps> like, even all the ever, you could hear him, like, oh, my God, he's not okay. Like, he what just happened? Okay. And Rogan's a little peacock over here strutting his stuff, like. <laughs> well, because he told him, because Jay was talking shit to him right before it. Yeah. Come on, Rogan, you think you're big and badass? Let's go. I can take it. No, bro, you cannot take it. it no, bro. You know what? Jay had a good, uh, he had a good, uh humor about it because didn't he post something yes he did actually uh I, don't, I sent it to you it was like a video or something um but it was something like making fun of himself dying like, yeah something about show. left a soul yeah it was really funny he actually i mean come on dude now you know bro you cannot go physical with that with rogan not uh, yeah. many other people on the show can no, not I mean, at Fessy all. Fessy can, but... Fessy for sure. Fessy's new this season. He he is also a specimen. He played D1 well, he's football. straight out of college ball, yeah. Yeah, he played D1, D1 football, like, yes. a year ago. Like. <laughs> and I think he went to the Combine or tried out for the NFL. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And I think he got injured or something. He's happened. a monster. Regardless, he's good. But he's a rookie, so Huge. we'll see what happens with him. But yeah. anyways, so that hit is... <laughs> Please go watch it. Please go like, YouTube and watch hit, it. Hit heard around the world, literally. Yes, for sure. You need to see it. Uh, but it reminded me of some injuries of mine all throughout my life, but especially around high school and college time. Uh, so it's okay. This show that hit reminded me of football so much, and people love football because of the violence and hitting. It's in us. It's the modern day gladiator. You know, like, those dudes are getting hurt. Now that the studies are coming out with concussions and shit, like, these are the most physically fit dudes on the planet yeah. hitting each other as hard as they can. Running, you know, like, it is brutal. These aren't just, like, your average day next door neighbor Joe coming down to, you know, tackle you. Yeah. And this dude terrain his whole life, and they picked him and paid him millions of dollars because he's so good at it. You know, like, it's rough. It's scary. Concussions so, are a real thing, guys. Don't, don't oh, take those time. lightly. <laughs> yeah, not at all. And, and they're very serious. So in high school, uh, I was on the football team, and one of my buddies uh, got a concussion. He got hit really hard. He was a safety, and he was trying to tackle someone, and the hit was just brutal, like helmet to helmet. Like, not, not intentional, but, right. you know, it was bad. So... I remember they, like, immediately, they stopped, and we went to the locker rooms with them. Like, they carried them in there. And in the locker rooms, uh, you will know this, what's the, what's the protocol for a concussion? Like, what's oh. the first thing they ask you? Like, what's they, your name? They what give you, you three items. No, they give Oh, to yes. remember. So they say, so they said, this, it was Eric. They're like, ball, cat, red. Say it again, Eric. Ball, cat, red. Okay. And then so they went along talking and they were getting stuff out to like get him. And they're like, okay, Eric, what was it? It, w it had not even been 10 or 15 seconds. And he's like, ball. And the doc or the, the trainer, because we didn't have a doctor there, of course, the football team was like, oh shit. Like, <laughs> he's <you> out. Guys, <laughs> yeah, guys, we're going to need to take him to the hospital. And so while they're doing that, follow up questions they're like, do you know what happened? Where are you? They're like, what's your name? He didn't have an answer he literally was like uh one of the guys one of the seniors this was like junior year one of the dick seniors was like batman he heard that and he literally looked at the trainer and was like my name is batman shut and the like, fuck up no i'm not he lying didn't. i'm not lying i'm not lying everyone in there was laughing and the trainer's like shut the fuck up <laughs> y'all get the fuck out of here this is not funny and we're dying laughing he legitly repeated it back to him two or three times when he asked him. He never said his own name. He straight up, and like, not joking, not like, oh, I'm Batman. Like, I'm oh, Batman. I was no, gonna say, I that know. means that he did not know who Batman was. Yes. Like, it wasn't exactly. He wasn't like, ah, oh, exactly. He oh, thought shit. it was just a normal name, and it was his. He was fucked up. Concussions are no joke in football. Like, no, no joke. No, they're not. And then not. now research is coming out now for especially NFL, even like high school and college, 
I mean, the concussions, it's, it's bad. It's the brain bouncing around inside when you hit from the helmet. It's not doing it. It's not doing the protection that everyone thought it was. No, definitely not. That's why they're constantly changing the concussion protocol. That's why they're constantly doing research on football helmets on how to prevent concussions, like concussion safe helmets and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's hard because now we have like little tykes, like kids are playing football at like seven. And We're in it, Texas. So I'm in Texas. We're from Texas. Guys. Football and Texas are synonymous. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, little fucking kids are playing it. Little yeah, kids. If you guys have seen the show on Netflix, it's called Little Tykes. Little Tykes is here in Texas. I, it's here uh, in Texas. Or one it's, of the mothers, one of the family, one of the kids that had played, the family that was on the show would come in the two step. I would see them all the time. Yeah, so they had the Little Broncos. My school was the Brandeis Broncos. Little Broncos practiced on our fields every day <laughs> after yeah. school, like right next to our softball field. So we'd watch them and they were filming. Like it was, it, it's crazy, insane, yeah. but super serious. That's not funny. Kind of funny now that he thought he was Batman. But that oh, yeah. sucks. It was funny. And everyone in the locker room was cracking up. And the, the trainer was like, this is no fucking joke, guys. Like, yeah, you guys are serious. dicks, you know? Because he straight up, like, didn't, he was like, oh, no, never mind. It's Eric. No, he was on um, Batman. My name's Batman. I My just name told Batman. you. Why are you asking me again? You know, he was so confused. Oh, he was my confessed. God. Yeah. Like, not to say football, stay away from it or anything, because it's no, an amazing, no. fun sport. We love football. But <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's a brutal, it's contact. It's, some, it's like rugby, but without pads or lacrosse, those are serious, too. Those are yeah, concussions are sports. serious. Yes. That's like a, a lot of boxers. They get hit in the head so many times, and they don't retire until it's too late, and it, it messes them up. Like, yeah. it's like, not like your brain, your intelligence, your speaking, your coordination, your movement, like it, it takes its toll on it. Some of the best boxers you see them when they're even 50, 60 years old, they're not the same. Exactly. Same thing with fighters, UFC fighter, kickboxers, same, like all that stuff. Definitely. It takes so a toll on a body. And that's why it's so serious to follow the concussion protocols, especially when you're younger. Oh my gosh. Like middle school, high school, guys, those are yeah. key years. Like if yeah, you get the concussion, then, yeah. oh man, like I had you a concussion be when I was like seven. You did from what? I okay. Well, first off, one more football story. Uh, one time senior year, we were in a game and they blitzed our quarterback and they hit him so hard they just sacked the shit out of him and he was laying on the ground. And we're like, okay, everyone get up. Like everyone, like someone. Oh, of course, the guys go over to pick him up to help him up. And he started screaming, I can't see. This isn't high school. We're just like, what the fuck did he just say? Like, what's going on? Everyone takes a knee. Everyone's down. People are rushing on the field. Like, any uh, trainers, both sides, everything. And he was screaming. Like, the whole stadium went silent. Screaming, I'm blind. I can't see. <gasps> he got hit so hard. I don't know if it did something to sever the con not sever but block the connection to the optic nerve for a couple it was like two minutes he was blind he couldn't see not stars i've been hit in the head plenty of times where you see stars but but black he literally thought he just lost his, lost his sight he was screaming in the middle of the field that's so fucking he was so terrifying. scared and they didn't know what to do also they didn't well, know yeah. i remember they probably I didn't remember. want to move him they probably were like don't touch him okay so it just so happens that I went to high school with uh, the sons of the, the Spurs doctor, San Antonio Spurs. He happened to be there at the game. One of the boys, the younger one, played football. Actually, both of them did. No, no, no. The older one only played basketball. Oh, okay. um, but, yeah, he went down there and helped him out. And then I, 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 if I'm not correct, in the ambulance, he got a sight back, like going to the hospital. So like, that's I remember, longer than two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Maybe it was on the sidelines. No, 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 I'm sorry. No, it was when he was on the fucking cart. That's what it was. Oh, because like I remember him parting him off the and, then, and then them announcing that he, he's okay. Like, he can see. Uh, not okay, because he was not okay. Not fine. <laughs> no, not fine. So, yeah, that shit is. Can you imagine getting hit and just and not seeing? And no. you literally think you just went blind. I would freak the fuck out. Like, I he can't was, imagine he was, that. It was so scary. It was so scary. Like, we're all kneeling around him on the field, and he's just screaming, and he's in, laying on the football field, and he can't see anything. Okay, so, okay, 
I have a story, but real quick. Shout out to the buddy story. Mimosa keeps bringing me her fucking toys. <laughs> <laughs> she won't leave me alone <laughs> buddy um okay so i was an avid softball player starting in i don't know like middle school i did little league played in high school like all that good stuff played select on travel teams um and i remember i collided with a girl so bad that i blacked out on the field and i fractured my tibia so we were oh, damn. Yeah, I was running I yeah. to second base, and we were in a tournament. We were in, like, the championship game of the tournament. Like, we were about to win. Mm -hmm. And I'm running to second base, and this girl, you're not allowed to obstruct the, the base path, path, the runner's path. Yeah. And this girl straight up, as I'm sliding into the base, straight up takes a knee right in front of me. Oh, yeah. And we just, Can't, like, yeah. collide, and I flip over her. And I wake up, <laughs> I like don't remember, and I didn't remember that. And then I woke up, and I was like four inches from the base. Like my hand was like reached out as far as it was, and I was so close to it that I just like went eh, and like touched the base because I was like base me, I need to be saved. Say it, yeah. And I literally touched the base, rolled over, and started screaming. I blacked out for however long that was and i was on the ground woke up touched the base rolled over sobbed like yeah and then i mean it was ended up being obstruction anyways i would have been safe but i felt the need to touch the base guys yeah i was gonna say did she have the ball did she she was receiving the ball she so she didn't even catch it no i obviously like, not i trucked it? her <laughs> well i don't know maybe she caught it and then you hit her and it, it fell out like when you if a catcher tries to block you at home oh it's on it's on i feel like that's what she did but she's obviously in the wrong because that's not how it's played at second yeah base. Like, okay, it was obstruction that. anyways no even if she had the ball it's obstruction like you can't straight up no i was just wondering if she held on to the ball like did she even like yeah that's right no it's against the rules but I still like yeah, no, it was, the ball was not in her hands <laughs> when I woke up. Let's put it that way. I don't okay. know where it was. <laughs> so I went to um, a Texas med clinic, I'm pretty sure, because we weren't in San Antonio. We weren't, like, we were in the outskirts. I yeah. think we were in Seguin, probably. I don't know. Went to, like, the closest Tex med clinic. Turns out fractured my tibia. Um, and then I showed back up to the field on crutches. That bitch felt so bad. <laughs> she was like, oh my god, are you okay? I was like, no, bitch, I'm not okay. Yeah. Yeah, and you fucking, first off, you know you can't do that. So, you know, like, that's against, you should know that. You should yeah. know that, especially you're playing select. This isn't, like, middle school or even elementary baseball where you're still unsure of the rules and what's dirty play and, you know, fair play. Yeah, no, we played very, we took softball very, very seriously. Yeah, if you're playing select in club, you're, you're doing this, yeah. Yeah, you're exactly. Serious. You're good. We, like, traveled to, um, where did we go? Oh, we went, like, to Dallas. We went, like, all over the place. Um, but, yeah, fun times. I have a lot of softball stories, fun softball stories. A lot of injuries from there? Yeah. yeah. I can imagine. That, uh, um, that, the concussion I first got in my developmental years, I blame it. That's why I'm like this. <laughs> uh, it was second grade. I was at St. George in the elementary school, and there was monkey bars, and I was trying to climb, like, underneath them. Yeah. And I didn't make it, and I fell down <laughs> right on my head. And I woke up, like, with blood everywhere. I, didn't, I don't even remember what had happened. How did you and fall on your head? I was crawling upside down, like, with oh, legs in there. upside down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, crawling, you know, like, suspended. You would never make it on the challenge. <laughs> No, definitely not now. <laughs> I can do fear factor. I'll I would, eat and I, do anything. I'm not afraid of anything physical. We so, have always wanted animals. to do fear factor. You know how they do the sibling one? I oh, think yeah. we'd be so good at that. We'd kill it. Yeah. But I told but, him, I was like, we need to put our fears as things that like we're not afraid of. Because you know how whatever you sit, tell them you're afraid of, that's the challenges yeah. they make. Exactly. Because I'm not afraid of any animals. Like. <laughs> Be like, yeah. okay, spiders, scorpions, tarantulas. Okay, let's go. Oh, you need to eat this. Yeah, it's going to taste bad, but I don't care. Eat it and throw it on. Like, I don't care. Yeah, I don't really care if anything tastes bad. What I really can't do is beetles. I, like, actually have a phobia of cockroaches and beetles, and that, that, that would get me. 
it, then I'm not going on the show with you. What do you mean? I wouldn't put that on my paper. <laughs> you know what's really funny? Uh, Joe Rogan, his podcast, or his, not his podcast, his, uh, his stand-up, sometimes, I, not now, but earlier in the shows, when he would throw some crazy facts at you, he'd be like, that's right, the fucking guy from Fear Factor just blew your mind. Because <laughs> he used to host the show when yeah. he was just starting out, before he made a big comedian and, uh, and uh, doing the whole UFC commentating, which is, he's badass at it. He's so, so expressive. Good. He's really good at it. He reads it good way of telling you what's really going on for people who don't understand fighting at that level you yeah. know you just see a couple guys hitting each other and he's like no look at his technique look at how he moves his hips look at how he shadow boxes against him like he's completely gonna dominate him he has a good way of uh telling viewers that like yeah he has like a really good eye for that and he's a great speaker so it comes across in a really great way like yeah. you want to listen to it um, well, speaking of waking up with, like, blood everywhere when you were on the monkey bars. <laughs> yeah, so I got concussion. I had stitches. I think it was just a few, like, three or four. Two or three, actually. And then, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't really remember much. I just remember waking up blood everywhere and then the teacher screaming. Oh, my God. <laughs> so when I was in elementary school, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I had to be. In elementary school. My mom played a really bad joke on my brother, and <laughs> I wasn't even part of the joke, <laughs> but it was about me. So when I was little, I always wanted a swing in my room. That was, like, my goal, and I would literally swing in my room, like, touch the ceiling. Like, I loved it. And one day I woke up and I literally had the worst nosebleed I have ever had in my entire life. I've only had like three. This one was a gusher. Blood everywhere, all over the carpet. And we had a, um, a Jack and Jill bathroom at, at our old house at the time. Yeah. Our rooms connected. are side by side with the bathroom. It's like a hallway style bathroom connecting them. Yeah. All right. So I run to the bathroom and I'm like screaming for my mom. There is blood literally everywhere. And so we're in the bathroom. This bloody nose lasts about 30 to 45 minutes. Like That's a long time. It was a long, long time. I was like lightheaded. Like it was you know, scary. <laughs> you know, if, yeah, I was going to say if a nose, if you can't clot or you don't stop it in like 10, 15 minutes, you're supposed to go to the hospital. Oh yeah. 100%. I, yeah. I was like seven. I don't even know how old I was. Um, but finally it stopped and I go back into my room and like just fall asleep. But I fall asleep like at the edge of my bed in a really weird way. And like I'm laying on one side and I guess my brother gets home from work <laughs> and is like, mom, what the fuck happened? There's blood everywhere. <laughs> and yeah, in the was, bathroom there was but yeah. on the carpet, that's why. It was on the carpet. Yeah. And she was like, BA, I need to tell you something. Your sister had an accident. She fell off her swing and hit her head, like, on the corner of her bed. And we had to take her to the hospital. She had to get stitches. Like, it was so bad. And so now she's finally sleeping. And <laughs> he comes... She said that he went in my room and was like, where are her stitches? Like, what do you mean? And she was like, she's laying on them. Like, they're on the other side. And that you were like, oh, my God. Like, wait, really? Like, is she not supposed to be sleeping right now? Like, shouldn't she be awake? Like, does she have a concussion? Like, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> and I do I remember think, that. I don't think she told you till like, the next day what happened. Or you came and asked me, like, are you okay? How are you feeling? I was like, I'm fine. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. No, I do remember it because uh, it was just, I got home. You're right. No, I think I got home from school because if you were seven, I was 16. No, Even around that like, age. Oh, because I remember it being like dark. Like I was already sleeping. I woke up from my sleep and had a bloody nose. Oh, I mean, yeah, it, it's possible. I don't know. For sure. But I remember, yeah, there was a ton of blood on your side of the bathroom. Was, what the fuck happened here? Um, Yeah. That was a good prank. I mean, hey, that's a prank. You take advantage of it, right? Yeah, no shit. That was fucking insane. Yeah. I was thinking about some of the, the worst potential injuries that I could have had. Like the time I almost cut my leg off with a chainsaw. <laughs> oh my God, guys. So I think we've told you our house is in a very <laughs> wooded area. And when we moved into the house, they had to excavate. What, what is it called? With the land? Uh, to dig down into the earth, yeah. 
into the rock to do the foundation? Yeah, they had to cut down all the trees, actually cut into rock. Like our land is rock, not dirt. So it yeah. was a huge thing. And even when we finally got the house built, there were still a fuck ton of trees in our backyard and we wanted to do so many more things back there. So my brother and I would go back there and like cut down trees or do whatever, gather brush. Like we were helping to kind of clear the land. No, no. What happened was <clears throat> we, they paid someone with big tractors to knock down the trees that we wanted and all the trees, they just fucking pushed them into a giant pile. It was our job to then go with a chainsaw and cut those trees up into firewood and then oh, stack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no, why we had right. to just attack the pile one at a time. Like whatever was coming out, like all this, uh, how, what is it? Hodgepodge? Is that the correct term? Of like woods and trees. Yeah. And just bzz, 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 bzz. That's how it no, happened. Exactly. So my brother took us a long time. It was a big pile. <laughs> yeah. My brother's obviously the one with the chainsaw and I'm like the transporter. I'm like moving firewoods. Yeah. You were taking up. the long, exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm like, turned around picking up wood and all of a sudden I hear oh fuck <laughs> I'm like what the fuck what happened and the chainsaw is still going off and I turn around and I don't even know like how this happened but I made straight up eye contact with your leg and you were <laughs> like you were like don't look don't look and I was like I'm already <laughs> looking at it <laughs> 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 leg is gushing blood guys <laughs> like what did you say you slipped and like the chainsaw no okay so yeah uh there was a log that was lower to the ground like it, the trees were sticking out it was a giant fucking pile of trees like they weren't all neatly you know it was just all the way so like we it was weird angles cutting some of the wood sometimes well this log was sticking out and we were cu i was cutting it to then do uh obviously the uh the fucking firewood so you could take them but it was lower to the ground. So I put my left uh, leg on a rock that was sticking out of the ground. Well, I'm cutting through the log or the tree and halfway through, like it, you need to push sometimes. It get, you need to, you know, some of those bigger trees, it's hard to cut through, especially with our chainsaw. It wasn't a super badass one. Yeah. So I'm pushing really hard towards the end of the log. And as I'm doing that, the rock that my foot's on comes out of the ground. Like, I thought it was a big enough rock that I could step on it. Well, it shifted its weight. It, it was only, like, this big after all. So it right. moved in the ground. And as my foot slipped off, I finished cutting through that log. And so it literally went, boom, and I felt it hit my leg. And I tried to pull back as fast as I could. But I knew, oh, my fucking God, what just, I don't even know how bad it is. And I look down, and I see bone for a millisecond, and then just blood, come down my leg. I was like, <gasps> it's not that bad. It's really not that bad. Like it, it looks bad. And I know I cut into the bone a little bit, but I didn't, you know, I didn't go halfway through or, you know, I just, it was, if you could see it, it probably just looked like a, like a Nick, like yeah. literally just a, like you were like, so caught it enough walking, to pull. like you were, it was just bleeding like crazy and it probably hurt like a bitch, but you were walking yeah. on it. So it was like, all right, he didn't like cut off his bone, yeah. but literally I just remember telling you, <laughs> don't, don't freak out go fucking get dad, tell him I cut my leg, I need stitches right now. Like, run, go. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, don't look at it, go get down. And I'm like, I'm already looking, it's there, <laughs> it's bleeding. <laughs> Seriously, I've, I mean, I've been scared you know, a few times in my life, some, in, like, at big accidents that I've been in. Yeah. Um, but shit, when I felt it hit my leg, when that, just that sequence, when it slipped through and, I, and my leg, like, the rock came out of the earth and it touched it, <sighs> I was like, how bad is this? Like, really? I don't know. Like, because I pulled back and then I was so like, bad. now I need to look down. And I already know it hurts really bad. So I don't know the extent. Yeah. Like, oh, they, you know what really saved me is that it hit the front of my leg. It hit right into the shin. So it cut to the bone. If it was the back, the calf, the calf muscle. That would have been so deep. You would have had to get, oh my God. It would have just, it would have just, oh man, that would have been, that's really, when I, it was not fun. It was so scary. And then I looked down, I was like, oh, I'm fucking fine. Thank God. I'm fucking money. Oh, whatever. Some stitches, but shit. Guys, I don't know if I've ever run faster in my life. I should go <laughs> get my dad. Dad! Bro, oh, yeah. his leg. Yeah. I was screaming and I was like, he said he needed stitches right now. And dad's like, what? No, he's probably fine. I'm like, no, he said he needed no. stitches right now. As soon right as you now. mentioned chainsaw and leg, 
like you should be like nine one one, all hands on deck, let's go. Like, yeah, chainsaw leg. Like, that's not a cut myself with a little knife. Yeah, no, no, no. So I have never gotten stitches, but I have needed stitches one time and did not go get them. <laughs> For when? So I was in high school playing softball. And I also did pageants for those of you that don't know. Um, when I was in high school, I competed in the Miss America organization um, in San Antonio, like all around. And I was doing a pageant in Houston. Wait, what, what year did you win? Um, 2013. I was You're Miss Teen San, teen San Antonio, right? Yeah, and the year before I was Teen Alamo City. Um, and then I did like just fiesta titles after yeah. that, but yeah, so I was doing a pageant in Houston <laughs> on a Sunday and this was a Saturday. I had a tournament, so I'm at a tournament and, um, we're playing the game, whatever. And I stole a base running to second. So I'm running the catcher throws the ball. I see it. Um, like coming into the second baseman's hands and I slide and when I slide I like kicked the girl I guess whenever I slid into her and so she fell the opposite way so my feet are going this way and then her feet are coming the opposite way now mm -hmm. and her cleat at this point we're wearing metal cleats we're in high school oh yeah and she straight up cleats me right under my chin. And I just remember like pain, but I thought I had just gotten kicked. Like it, it yeah. didn't hurt that bad. I was like, oh, she just kicked me in the face. Like, fuck that hurt. Um, I was safe guys. Don't worry. But I got up and they were like, Presley, like you, you like they're pulling you out of the game. I was like, what, for what? Like, what do you mean? I was like, I was safe. And they were like, you're gushing blood. <laughs> Yeah, if you've never been cut or hit in the face in a fight, the face bleeds a lot. The whole head does. Like, any, like even if you're shaving for guys and you cut yourself, it, it, the amount of blood that comes out for a tiny little cut is a lot. Like, you're, a lot of blood gets pushed up here. Yeah. And so, like, the head, the brain needs a lot of blood. Yeah. Exactly. Anything especially on the face when you're a lot. Especially when you're exercising, think about it. Like, so much blood is being rushed to your head. So, I get off the bench and our trainer is there actually. And they're like, you need to go get stitches. I was like, I'm not going to go get stitches. I have a fucking pageant tomorrow. You think I'm going to go with stitches on my face? And they were like, well, like, it, it needs to be glued. Like, it needs to do something. And I was like, throw yeah. some steri strips on there. And, like, we'll be good. Well, I'll figure it out later. Like, we got some games to play, guys. <laughs> yeah. So they threw some steri strips on there. And that was it. I was like, you know what? It's going to be fine. Well... Later on in the day, later on that night, I'm, like, getting ready to um, go to my pageant. I'm, like, packing everything. We were leaving, like, after this game. We were supposed to leave. And so I'm, like, packing everything, and I'm, like, my chin hurts like a bitch. Like, yeah. so, so bad. But I'm, like, you know what? It's fine. And it's still bleeding. And I'm, like, oh, I can't. Like, I can't go to the hospital. I have no choice. Like, I have to make it to Houston. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so I just stuck with Steri strips. I made the trainer give me like a buttload because I was like, I got to make sure that I'm constantly closing. And if it bleeds through, like that means it's open. Like I got to keep closing it. Yeah. And so the next day is the pageant. My whole chin <laughs> is bruised. It looks like a black eye on my chin, guys. <laughs> yeah, fuck. I was just going to say, I was like, how did it look? Couldn't you see? Did not look good. Thank God I have to wear makeup for pageants. <laughs> Damn. So literally. What about the, couldn't you see the Steri strip or no? So I still have a scar from it. I don't know if you can tell on camera. It's right here. Mm -hmm. um, no, you but you can feel right, it. Can. It's like a bump. And the Steri strips, I put them like going this way. And mm -hmm. then the, I just put a fuck ton of makeup right here. And the Steri strips are clear. Like if you've ever seen Steri strips. Um. They're clear with like a little white bands on them. And so they blended pretty well with makeup. Like no one could That's tell. True. And especially in pageants, you're not this close to somebody talking face to face. Like even in interviews, somebody is sitting at least 
seven, eight feet away from you and you're like standing up and I was like, chin down, like nobody can see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was a fun story. I was like, fuck that. I can't get stitches. I got a pageant, bitches. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Does it, do any of your old injuries still affect you? Did you say something pops on you, your hip or your knee? Yeah. So I, so what, since I fractured my tibia, um, I fractured it right along the growth plate on my right leg. And oh, so shit. my knee will hurt a lot, like right where. Is that why you always lean like this? The, no. What do you mean? <laughs> like That's on camera, kidding. you mean? I no, I'm just kidding. I find my, I see myself <laughs> doing that a lot. Oh, um, no, that's not why. Obviously, I have a very fucked up shoulder. I played softball for a long time. Um, it, it my shoulder is destroyed, but for a different reason. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. My shoulder pops constantly. Um, and then my hip. I hyperextended my hip in high school during a softball game also. I, like, tore some stuff in my shoulder, and I hyperextended my hip at the same time diving. And I just, like, landed wrong. I don't know. And I also danced at the time. That was, like, my talent for pageants. And so... It was just a lot of stress that was being put on my body, like a <laughs> yeah, fuck time. Sure. And also it was a lot of stress in so many different ways. Like I was lifting yeah. weights for softball and then I would go and I was stretching constantly for dance. Like it was just a weird mix for my body. And so my hips sometimes will come out of place, especially like getting out of the car, for example, just that mm. motion alone. I, and I just have to sit there. I get like excruciating pain and I have to sit there for like a few minutes until I have the courage to like <laughs> pop it Damn. back in. <laughs> That's rough. Yeah. I know my shoulder still bothers me a lot. Did I tell you, do you know how I hurt my shoulder? My rotator cuff? No, I, I didn't even you know would that. Think, yeah. You would think baseball, football, fighting. No, I threw a party and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I threw a party and some like underclassmen wanted to come or they did come. And I was like, no, nah, I'm sorry, guys. Like, y'all got to go. Like, yeah. this is seniors only. Whatever. Like, like, in high school? Is that what you Yes, mean? it was okay. in high school. Okay. And they're, like, sophomore juniors. I was like, no, not comfortable. No, fuck off. And so they were, they were, oh, they were, you know why? Because they were already fucked up when they got here. Oh, I was like, yeah, no. no. So they left, and then some other the people uh, at the party come up to me, like, bro, those people that you told you just couldn't, they just flipped their truck, leaving your property. Uh, going down, going down to the, going down the hill. So from our house to get down to the hill, it's just like your HV and where like the road is, is three Wait, and a half in miles. our house now? Yes. So. I uh, did not know this. Yeah, it was in high school. It was senior or the year right after that. So, um, to get from our house down to the HV, like really get down the hill, it's 3.3 miles. I can make it in like four or five minutes, but. If you go the speed limit, and actually it's super windy, no street lights, up and down hills, deer coming everywhere, nothing but woods, it should take you like 15 minutes. Well, it's for seven people, minutes. Okay. For people who going the speed know, limit? No. going the speed limit, and for people who know the road. Like for me, it takes me seven minutes, and I drive the speed limit the whole way. But I also really? know GPS the road. GPS says longer. Okay. Really? No. GPS I, will tell people longer because when people try to come here, like it's so far. I'm like literally from the HB. It's only like five or ten minutes. GPS over exaggerates. And I'm like, oh, okay, because it says fifteen minutes from there. I didn't know yes, that. Yes, it always says that for people. Oh. I was like, no, it's not. It's fucking not. No, so, yeah, it's it's usually seven minutes. I also know the road like the back of my hand, but yeah. it usually takes me seven minutes. But you're right. So it is. I will admit a super windy dark road it really for is. sure well so a whole bunch of us jump in someone's pickup truck and we go to uh to see them and they're about halfway down the hill I don't, i'll tell you exactly where they are if i can remember it but uh uh well it's that side road to the right you know where that uh retirement home is yes yeah yeah, yeah. whatever that road is where you know my how friend used dips? to live yes yeah. you know how on the right of the road it's dipped mm-hmm all grass that's where he crashed his truck because it's right before or after a turn yeah regardless he fucking was in there so all the guys go over there and they're okay they're banged up but they're okay and the guy's like i can't fucking leave my truck here what am i gonna do my mom like he was freaking out right and it was, I was flipped like, yes they flipped the truck they flipped the fucking truck 
And so uh, we're like, what the fuck, man? Like, what are we going to do? And I was like, well, there's like eight of us, six of us, whatever it was. And I was like, we're all on the football team. Let's do, let's do this. So we flipped the truck back to its you know, upright, but I was fucked up. When we were all lifting and pushing the truck, my hand somehow got caught in the luggage rack because it was on its side. So when the weight finally caught and, and jerked the truck over, it ripped me off the ground by my arm and slammed me against the truck. That's why I tore my rotator cuff. It was never the same after that. It hurt so fucking much. To this day, from there to right there is like a two on the pain scale. Like it's not anything bad, but it's there. And then if I try to lift weights, oh, fuck that. Even doing push-ups, every single one hurts. It's never can you same. like? Can you like touch behind your back? Like take your hand, yeah. do this, and go like that? That's yeah. like the hardest part for people who like tear their rotator cuffs when they're healing. Mm, so that's this, I mean, it hurts a little bit. What really hurts is right there yeah. to there. So Jesus bad. I'll never, Christ. I'll never forget that because we're all like, Ugh. and I, I, I guess just when the weight started to go, my hand slipped and went, in in it and it just whoop, like a rag doll i mean it's a fucking truck like a well, yeah. rag doll holy shit yeah that's a, you know, my arm to this day hurts <laughs> okay good to, that okay that's fucking wild like that yeah that's situation. my arm will never be the same yeah. for sure I mean, especially least, with free weights or when i try to do butterfly or like different kind of presses oh my god it hurts so bad yeah at least you were like young enough so that way it could heal itself enough so you could like live your life you know but normal people would have gotten surgery for this stuff guys <laughs> like if you tear well, your I, rotator cuff it's serious i don't even know why i, I hid it from mom and dad like there's no reason to like yeah. i didn't do anything wrong anything but i just i just kind of like i'll heal it on my own and then took a long time to even feel okay a long time to even it was brutal even doing anything i couldn't even lift like a cup a cup of water i couldn't even hold a cup yeah with and some weight in it for a while i was like oh my god it's totally it's gone no i know but now it's I, okay that's good um no yeah. rotator cuffs are serious <laughs> for sure there's a lot of stuff that just ridiculously happened around the college years from partying <laughs> too much like the massive burn on my leg what the fuck are you talking about okay so i have a burn <laughs> that uh, about three inches above my knee that literally looks like someone put out an entire cigar on my leg oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay i know what you're okay. talking about so we were drunk and my good buddy jacob was over and he had told me about something that they used to do in mississippi and he's like look let me do it to you so if you take like a lighter i don't think i have a lighter around here. i don't have a lighter um one of the ones that the little uh wheel that you push to spark mm -hmm. the ones that don't have the safety thing that it's like two ridges yeah yeah right? yeah okay he says if you flick it and hold it on fire and hold it on its side for a little bit then you can then push the top of it to someone's wherever their skin is and it'll burn a smiley face on them because it's the two ridges and then the bottom of the lighter i was like oh that's fucking cool yeah happy face <laughs> me up bro but we are fucked up. So Jacob's, I don't know how long you're supposed to hold it, but he didn't hold it that length. He held it way, way longer. <laughs> so he had the lighter and we're just in there talking and drinking, blah, blah. And he's like, he's like, okay, should be ready. It was like a few minutes. Oh so when he puts it to my leg, it's just like, I was like, ah, <laughs> fucking screaming. And he pulls it up. It's just a giant, like burn, like pus skin, like all, you know, burned. I was like, oh my god! You got like third degree burn, you fucking it went idiot! Down. It, it, you know how like I don't know if you've ever been burned this bad, but when you go through a few layers, you can actually see the hole. Like it's not just a little. It goes in. You could put your finger like down into yeah. my skin a little bit. I haven't been burned that bad, but I've seen it. Hurts it. So fucking bad for I want to say two or three months, wearing any kind of pants or uh, any kind of pants or shorts, walking. Just rubbing against it, even with, uh, even with, if bandaged, even bandaged, any kind of pressure on it was excruciating. And God forbid if I bumped into something, like excruciating pain. Jesus that burn was so bad to heal. And you didn't even get a smiley face out. No, of it. it's just a big no. <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. No, it's not. It straight up looks like a cigar burn. And they're like, damn, you put a cigar on your leg? Who did that to you? 
my friend. My friend. <laughs> That's so yeah. funny. Oh my god, Dylan and I, we um, we actually just went to the beach, and fun fact, Dylan hates lotion. He has never worn put lotion on his body in his entire life. Because I don't like it because it doesn't absorb fast enough. Like yeah. when I rub it on, I want it to be done, and I want my skin to feel fine, like not oily, not. That's, I, I, hey, I think a lot of guys feel like that. Okay, Dylan is like that, but to the extreme. Like, he is so weird about it. He's very weird about things touching his skin, like, super sensitive to it. So when we go to the beach, I have to force him to, like, wear sunscreen, but he will only wear spray sunscreen. And even that is, like, pushing it for him. Like, he doesn't want to put it on. I don't like sunscreen either because of that same. I want I want any lotion to absorb into my skin as fast as hand sanitizer does. If they could do that, all lotion up all the time. Yeah, no, that's that because even right. like getting out of the shower, you know what's very important is to lotion your tattoos to yes, take care of your tattoos. Extremely. So lotion, lotion, and I feel like if I put on a shirt or something, it's like stuck to me. I'm like, this is this is stupid. Like, <laughs> I got shit to do. I'm trying to get ready to go somewhere and get dressed. Like. <laughs> Okay, I hear you, brother. I hear you, Dylan. I hear you. I do do my elbows and, you know, and my tattoos for sure. Okay. And my scar now, the surgical scar. I hear you, brother. Okay, so um, we went to the beach literally just this weekend, and he refused to put on sunscreen. He was like, no, 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 I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I was like, I know it doesn't feel that hot because it's breezy, but UV index is a nine, bro. Oh, like, yeah, that's up there. You're gonna burn. And he was like, it's fine, it's fine. Like, I was like, okay, but I don't want to fucking hear it. When you get burned, <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Like, that's it. And sure enough, he got crispy. <laughs> Very crispy. <laughs> and he's complaining about it, whining about it. Oh my God, my shirt is touching my shoulder. Oh my God, that hurts. Oh my God. And I'm like, I don't want to fucking hear it. But I did get this stuff from the hospital one time when I burned my hand, like giving somebody coffee. Like it, it, mm-hmm. it spilled on me and it burned my hand. It's like silver, sul- sulfate, something like that. Yes. Yeah. And it gets rid of burns like mm-hmm. that, like takes away the stinging. It's expensive though. Okay, well, I got it from the hospital. I don't know how No, no, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, I don't think I've actually ever used it, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, yeah. so... It's really I, cool, though, isn't it? Like, th- like putting it on? Yeah, it, it looks like a cream. That's, like, what it's like. It's in one of those, like, aluminum uh, tubes. Bottles, tubes. Yes, I do have one. Yeah. I, I ha- yes, I have used that. Yeah. And Dylan's, like, top of his feet were so burned, and he was crying like a little bitch. And I was like, you know what? just let me put it on you. Like, I know you won't touch it, but just let me do it. And he was like, well, let me just do like a little bit. Let me see how it feels first. I was like, just like, are you kidding? So finally he let me do it. And he was like, this stuff is amazing. (laughs) I'm not much for lotion. I mean, I do use it obviously every fucking day after the shower, but, uh, if I'm burned, fuck that. Bring aloe, the aloe vera, vera me up. <laughs> no, the aloe vera with lidocaine. Lidocaine. No the blue ice up. one, not the green one, <laughs> the blue one. Yeah. Fucking put that on you and lay with AC on or a fan. You're like, oh, it's just cooling and tingle feels so good. I hate aloe vera though. Because but I aloe vera hate. feels disgusting also on you. It's, yes. it's even worse. It's like sticky. I'm like, why am I putting this shit on me? I feel like I'm going to get covered in mosquitoes if I want. Exactly. Oh my gosh. I hate aloe vera. But Maybe you should have gotten that for your little burn. Maybe it would have gotten better. <laughs> oh my god, I don't think so. Not that burn. It was <laughs> so down. It was so deep. It was it was not good. It took forever to actually heal. It was months before it even I could even touch it. Or like like every day putting on like underwear or pants, anything that just brushed it on my leg would like brought me to tears. <laughs> it was That's so terrible. fucking bad. What it the was. Fuck? It's like, I hate you, Jacob. He's like, my bad, bro. I was like, I mean, I let you do it. So (laughs) I let you do it. So I'm the fucking idiot too, man. I gotta take responsibility for this kind of shit. Yeah. Speaking of beach, did I ever tell you about when I was real young? uh, Like I've had, I've been attacked by some winged animals before. uh, Of the smaller size, we'll go with the bees. Uh, One time in Santa Monica, somewhere in California. I I feel like it was there. Oh. You were in Seattle when that happened. Are you sure? Yeah. I'll ask mom, but okay. We were at the beach. We were at, no, not the beach. We were at the pier. And we were walking at, uh, on the pier, and uh, I was walking in front of my parents, 
and my mom was wearing, I guess, some perfume. Like, I could fucking smell it. I think this is the 90s when everyone wore too much perfume and cologne. Like, you could <laughs> fucking smell when the chick walks in. You know, like, this is too much people, okay? Yeah, One yeah. little squirt, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. So you could smell it. And we were wa- I was in front of them walking on the pier, and there was a hollowed out, um, what are the wood things come out of the water called? Part of the pier? The fucking columns that look like Uh, railroad ties. Whatever they make them out of, you know, that wood. Well, a whole swarm of bees, either her perfume pissed them off or something. Well, it definitely pissed them off because we were walking and without warning, I'm in front of them like 10, 15 feet uh, from this log. I just see all these bees come out and immediately attack me. Like no warning, no swarm. Let's check them out first. Let's, you know, uh uh-uh. 100% full attack out of nowhere just whoosh, i got stung i think like 17 18 times and i was a little kid i was like five they didn't take you to the hospital though did they i don't think so i mean i'm not allergic it was super painful but i'll never forget that and then so i like i'm not, i'm okay with bees i'm really fine with them the only times i want them to get i mean it's really if people are allergic if they're around them because i don't want to yeah. kill bees like the tarantula i found yesterday i trapped it and i put them outside it's probably gonna be in the garage again but I just don't want them to bite the dogs, you know? Yeah, That's exactly. My thing. But the wasps, on the other hand, oh, fuck, fuck you guys. I like bees. Fuck you guys. I went to a nursery one time, um, not, not for human children, for plants. And, oh, actually, I was getting some badass plants for the pond at the Desavala house. Oh, okay. That's what I was doing. No, I wasn't. I was doing it for here to build Chip's aviary. Oh. That's what it was. So I was there, and... Um, you know, about all the plants, talking to the people. And on the way out, I was like, outside in the front, uh, it's Rainbow Nursery off of Bandera. Mm-hmm. In the front, I was like, they have black bamboo. Beautiful. Like, there's not a lot of places with black bamboo in there. And San Antonio. So I was like, do y'all sell that? And they're like, no. We, we, someone planted it out there. We planted it out there a long time ago. And now it's just fucking growing. If you want shoots, chop them down and take them. And it was like a big ass area. I was like, oh shit, cool. So what I wanted was the older, mature bamboos so the stalks would be thicker because I wanted to cut them down because I was building Chip's, Chip's aviary. So I wanted those to be the purchase, the bamboo right. purchase in the aviary. I was like, oh, it's fucking perfect. But I need to get to the middle for the large, the older ones because they grow out, right? Yeah. And so have you ever seen like a bamboo forest? They grow like this close to each other. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're close. very concentrated and straight up because, you know, the stalks, they don't have branches like, everywhere. <laughs> Right. And so I'm like squeezing in between them, like fighting my way. Like it's super hard to get to the middle. And when I'm finally getting to the middle, I'm like, okay, I can see them. And I have a saw too. I was like, I can cut, cut, cut. And I'll be able to like stick them, fish them through. So uh, my buddy can pull them out. Right. Well, I'm in there and I just fucking hear everywhere. And then I feel a sting on my leg and I was like, shit. And I look down and I swat it. It's a wasp. And then as I do that, I feel like two or three more on my body. Like other leg, my back, my arm. I was like, oh shit, they're all around me, all around me. And my friend's like yelling at me, run, 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 run. I can't run. I'm locked in there. Like I have to look exactly how to get out. It's not just a bull rush through them. I can't break through those. It's like a little forest of them. Oh I got stung, God. I, I want to say 27, 28 times. I think we, when we counted them, Holy it was brewed shit. all over my hands, like arms, legs, back, everywhere. I didn't you know, know, I don't know think, about that. I don't think I got hit. Oh, yes, I did. My head, my hair. When I had hair, <laughs> uh, for sure they stung me on the head. Yeah. Real bad. Really fucking bad. I'm shook. <laughs> I, was, I was so mad at those bees. And my buddy was on the outside. He couldn't do anything. He was just, ride, ride, ride. <laughs> I'm trying. This is going to, I'm going to die. Because wasps, they just grab onto you and they can sting you multiple times. Multiple they times. don't die. And they're oh bigger, they're fast. They're, I mean, they're beast predators. Fucking sucks. Holy shit. Yeah, they fucking suck. I hate wasps. Them. They scare me. They obviously had a fucking nest in there and I disturbed them. I mean, that's yeah. my bad. It's, they're doing what they're doing, protecting their home. But shit, that hurt. Wasps also, like, look scary to me. Like, they're fiery red, and they have, like, they have, like, elite bodies. Like, I don't know. They are. They are. Hornets and wasps are the fighter jets of bugs. 
Yeah, they're, they scare they're, me. They're the Apache helicopters. They are made for attack. Their design is beautiful. Yeah. And when you get wasps that can take out uh, really badass spiders and lay their eggs, you know that, right? Yeah. Desperate wasp and spider tarantulas fight, and they'll, and they'll inject their babies into the body of the spider, and so the eggs will grow and hatch in them, and then they explode out, killing the spider, and so all the baby wasps have something to eat. That's what they do. Dick. <laughs> you didn't know that? That's what they do. Desert wasps. Yeah. And you know we have them here, right? Probably. We have fucking everything. In the volleyball court. <laughs> Stop. All those things flying, those are sand wasps. And You've those are the ones them? that do that? Yeah, no, I've seen them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Guys, in our volleyball court, we've been, I thought those were like green. We have like they green are. bees Actually, down there. They are. They look like, yeah, they look like badass hornet, wa hornets, more hornets, because they're striped, but they're green. Yeah, they're green. Okay, so they're hornets, or they're wasps. See, sand wasps? Wasps have lots ponds? of colors, too. They're not just okay. wasps, hornets, and the other one, uh, jackets. They're all like identification, you know, like. Yeah, guys, things. during this like season where you see these green wasps, apparently, all you see is like tiny little holes in the sand. Yeah, they live in the sand. And there's like 50 of them. Just like on like so on many. top of this sand, it's fucking crazy. Yeah, and the I volleyball get so court, scared. Yeah. Even when we'd have people over to play volleyball, literally we'd have to spend a little bit of time. First, you got to hose off all the sand because it's so hot you can't stand on it. And then fucking make sure they all come out of the sand because they yeah, they're all their their little tunnels everywhere. And there's, I mean, you said 50, but I'm seeing, I've seen hundreds. Because it's a volleyball court. It's big. Yeah. Just everywhere flying. And then they're laying, they're having a great time. Like, that's their fucking, it's a palace <laughs> over there. That's their them. playground. They're But chilling. they're fucking, they look beautiful. They look cool as shit. Yeah, they, they're green, literally. Yeah. I always thought yeah. they were just like green bees. I didn't know what they were. But I've never fucking seen a green bee. You know what? I'm going to have to look that up because they are... Even uh, I've had friends over and shown them, and they're like, oh, when Shadow came over the other day, so we could try to pick out a spot for the pond. I want to build a pond. Yeah. And he was like, dude, those are fucking cool looking. I was like, yeah, but don't fuck with them, man. Don't go in the volleyball court, man. <laughs> no, no, no. That's their home. <laughs> but yeah, they're beautiful. That's oh, for sure. Oh, boy. But yeah, I've been tagged by them, plenty of scorpions, spiders, snakes. There's been a lot of, by different shit. Yeah, a lot. I've only, the first time I ever got stung by a bee, I stepped on it in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> I have a friend who uh, got stung on the tongue. How? Guess, guess. Did it fly into his mouth? Asshole bee flew into his soda can. <gasps> Stop. Yeah. And then another friend swallowed it, or it stung him into the throat, and they swallowed it and had to go to the hospital. Oh my god! They're super attracted to sugar and shit like that, and they flew into their- it was literally their sodas. It was like Coke and Dr. Pepper. And then, That's fucking terrifying. Yeah. Yes! Big time! Can you imagine if you happen to be allergic, which you won't know until you get stung? Or if you're, like, related to someone and then you- you, you should get tested. That's like <laughs> if your our, parents are. One of our cousins is super allergic to bees and ants. Who? Um, Lisette. Oh. Like, super allergic. It's scary. Guys, Buddy over here won't leave me alone. I'm sorry. <laughs> she won't. Look, she brought me a new toy. <laughs> Why'd you bring her a squeaky toy? This one has, like, five squeakers, too. Look, all these little bubbles are squeakers. <laughs> Maybe put that one away during recording. <laughs> sorry, guys. My bad. No, it's all good. Uh, well, yeah. guys, <laughs> a lot of people don't like bees and things, and obviously for a reason. Like my friend Gabe, he if he sees one, he will run, like run away until it's gone. Okay, literally will run. <laughs> and then so when all the things about the murder hornets, hornets came out, I would send him memes, and he's like, "Fuck you, bro!" I was like, "Is this your worst nightmare?" And he's like, "Yes, literally, literally, like I'm already deathly afraid of them. Now they can actually murder me." Yeah, literally. Um, no, there was a meme online, so, like I mentioned earlier when we were talking about, almost a shut up, okay, I took it away, um, when we were talking about Fear Factor, how I have a phobia of beetles and cockroaches, mm -hmm. um, my brother tagged me in a meme that was like, <laughs> you don't need a gun or anything to rob me, all you need is a roach, and I was like, that's me. <laughs> I was just explaining the other day to, uh, some friends, about your spider hallucinations 
<clears throat> and that the thing that fascinated us was that you are not afraid that the feelings are different. Because I was like, if she saw a bug, she would freak the fuck out. If they fly, game over. But still, any bug any that you unnecessarily bug. freak out. Uh, guys, I don't know what it is. I just have a massive fucking phobia. Did you know cockroaches can bite you? Bet you didn't, but they can. And then, like, and, think about the And hissing. they fly real fast. And they fly. And the hissing cockroaches, mm. like... Those are in Madagascar. Those are strictly pets. I can't, guys. They're in like, Madagascar. They're on what? one small island in the entire world. Yeah, but they have some here, like, in pet stores. Like, one of because my friends... Yeah. Well, one of my friends had some, and he brought them to school one day in high school. And these things are literally hissing like a fucking cat, guys. What caught... That's not supposed to happen. Yeah, but you could just hold them. They're really cool. I don't when I worked at the zoo, so when I worked at the zoo in the education department, one of the uh, uh, carts that we would take out for the, so people can actually interact, you got to take like basic animals. You can't take anything cool, anything that's going to get hurt, anything that, you know, like, well, one of the carts was a bug cart. So you would take out jungle nymphs, which I know you don't know what that is. If you're listening, you should look up jungle nymph. It's one of the largest bugs in the world. It's going to blow your mind and you're going to be afraid of it. I Look it up right now on your phone. I, I am, I am right now. Jungle And then we nymph. would take out Nymph. And then we would, uh, and they fly also. Oh, they're, they're, those are large. Presley, they're, they're the size of your hand. You know the ones you <laughs> see like in, yes, they're literally the size of your hand. <laughs> Guys, like fuck the, this. <laughs> the toy ones you see like in the toy section, that's how big they are. No joke. Oh no, and I they, need to like get this off my phone. Fly. <laughs> they fly too, which is bizarre. Because you wouldn't think a bug that big when you hold it, you're like, this bitch has some weight. Like a bug has some weight. And then it uh when they would fly, we would have to cat like stop them from flying because they're so rare that like if they could hurt themselves. Yeah. So when they did, we would have to like cup their hands to like calm down, calm down, don't fly, don't fly. What the fuck? Um millipedes. And hissing cockroaches. We would take them out and let uh, kids and people hold them. They're really cool. They're cool pets. No. They're very low maintenance, which is very cool if you want. And if you're into that kind of stuff, because not everyone's like a, I mean, honestly, not everyone's like a bunny, a hamster kind of person. Snake, spiders, scorpions. I could catch a million outside. And you know, all scorpions glow under black light. So a lot yeah. of people keep scorpions as pets and they have a black light and it looks fucking dope. Feed them some crickets. Yeah, someone um, was just asking me the other day about scorpions, and they were like, so if, like, you get stung by a scorpion or, like, your dog gets stung by a scorpion, like, what happens? And I was like, it depends what kind, but, like, the ones that we've gotten stung by, nothing. Uh, in Texas, it, it just hurts. They all, everything has poison. Yeah. So it, it depends on the species, of course, and then it, it big time depends on uh, the placement also. Because Scotch got very sick, and I had to take him to the ER when he was a puppy. Uh, a scorpion stung him in the mouth. Oh. And he couldn't eat everything blood up. He had to get a uh, subcutaneous IV shot. They literally, like, grabbed the scruff of his fur. Yeah. And filled him up with, like, an IV. He had a balloon. He looked like a camel. There was oh, fluid yeah. under his skin, and they're like, why his body lets that go down? He won't have to eat or drink for the next two days. I was like, oh, so he's, and like, he's fine. He has everything he needs in that hump. And it slowly absorbs into the body. Oh. Like, oh, okay, but that's what happened to him. All right, something was wrong with him. He wouldn't respond anything. I was like, what the fuck? Rushed him, and then they're like, something bit him in the mouth. Probably a scorpion stung him. Probably. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, guys, okay, so I'm pretty sure we're way over time, but I just have one more thing to show you on my phone. So my friend just got a Bengal kitten who is doing fantastic, by the way. What did she name him or her? Yeah. Layla. You know what's really funny? My friend, or not my friend, an acquaintance of mine, she used to be a bar regular at a cloak. Uh, she used to have two bangles. One of them passed away. She just got another one. She's been sending me pictures like crazy. She really? This fucking thing. Yes. Oh my uh, gosh. F, her, one of them's an F2, and this one she just got is an F3, which okay. stand, the generational gap from the wildcat to the Yeah. Best. So she's awesome. Absolutely fantastic. She has gone to the beach with us. Like, this cat is for real? Cool. Yes. This cat is dope. Um, but she just got stung by a bee yesterday. Look at her paw. Oh, you can't see the glare on the phone. Oh, or maybe man. other people will. Maybe, yeah. Oh, but... compared to the other paw? <laughs> yes, wait, did you see it? <laughs> Can you yes, see it Yes, the one now? on the right is fat. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, poor kitty. 
No, yeah, my friend Kimmy, she just got another one, and then she posted a picture of her, the, the adult cat and the kitten cuddling together. I was like, damn, they look cool. They look yeah. like ocelots, like wild cats. Exactly. So Layla, um, she, like, climbs trees and stuff. Like, Elizabeth goes outside with her, and she'll climb a tree while Elizabeth is sitting out there, and then she'll come back. And she got stung by a bee yesterday. Sad. And she comes back? Damn, we need to get one. They're so cool. Uh, Elizabeth was telling me, she was like, they're not like a normal cat. One, she's super elite and yeah. super fucking strong like this kitten is maybe like four or five pounds maybe she's five months old but she's she's tiny like she's very mm -hmm. light um so i don't know if i've showed you my couch brother but they have almost the same couch as i do it's an ikea couch where you pull the bottom part out and you lift it and it's like a bed mm -hmm. But it's not like a pull-out couch, but, you know, it, like, comes yeah. up and it makes a full bed. So, Layla, it has a, it has straps that you pull out, and Layla can pull theirs out. That thing is not light. It's, like, 15, at least 15 pounds, like, 10, 15 pounds to, like, pull it and lift it up. That doesn't shock me. She could pull it out. She's five months old. That does Isn't not that shock crazy? me. crazy? Pound for pound, cat felines are the strongest in the world. Like, I mean, I don't quote me on that one, but they're, it's not like a dog. A 30 pound dog, okay, is pretty good. A 30 pound cat, a bobcat will fucking kill any human. Yeah, like, that's true. No problem. Okay, a quick example the leopard at that hunting ranch I went to, yeah. one leopard slaughtered four adult Doberman pinchers. Yeah. Slaughtered. Terrible what happened. And if you haven't heard that episode, go back and watch that one. But cats are, there's no joke. It's like, they're so elite. When uh, you were here and Bombay was playing with the mimosa, Bombay is playing as she wants. If she wants, she's gonna kill that dog. Yeah, Bombay could literally put mimosa to the ground, elite. and mimosa is twice or three times the weight of Bombay. Yeah, for sure. Cats are, that's why typically, I don't know. I, I always want the, the cat to kind of bop the puppy on the nose one time. Just to, you know, and then the dog like, ooh, don't fuck with the cat. Okay, give it some space. And then hopefully then they'll be kind of cool. I mean, didn't really happen with Kalua because she's a monster, but yeah, cats are incredibly strong. The feline strength is, the, the weight ratio is way up there. Yeah, it is for sure. But, <laughs> God, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up then since so she's squeaking away. All right, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. We had some funny ones. We talked about some cool stuff. If you haven't, go watch the challenge. Oh, my God. Amazing <laughs> fucking show. It's our What's favorite. What's the season called? Into the Madness? Total Madness. Total Madness. There you yes, go. it's season 35. Four or five, yeah. 35. Um, Huge fucking fans. We watch it every Wednesday. Fucking love it. Um, so shout out to those guys. Shout out to that show and their physical fitness. Holy shit. Hell yeah, they're all badass. If you're on the challenge and you ever see us, we want to meet you. Yes, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna send this to Carmaria and Polly and be like, yo guys, what's up? And bananas and West and CT. There's a whole bunch and of CT, them. CT, all of them. Leroy, Dare, all there's too many to name. Yeah, they're all fantastic. Um, but thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. Shout out to our bands once again. Hell yeah, Saltwater Slide does our opening music. They're a uh, Texas reggae band, really good guys. They promote a lot of uh, environmental consciousness and they do some beach cleanups and they just have some really good chill music. Highly recommend go checking them out on YouTube and other social media platforms. And uh, damn, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm actually really excited that, well, we need to wait for COVID to go away, obviously, but I fucking want to go to another one of their concerts really soon. So I'm really pumped to see them. Yes, um, and then shout out to our outro band, Love Killed the Hero. Shout out to the Wally. lead singer, Wally Robles. Um, they're releasing new music all the time. Their song in our outro is so damn nice. Go check them out on YouTube, all their social media accounts, and go follow us on social media if you don't already. It's effing priceless on Facebook and Instagram. We're on YouTube and iTunes, so be sure to like, subscribe, and rate us. So thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next Tuesday. It's getting late, my body.